Hi, and welcome to our cost accounting series on job costing. In this first video, we're going to be discussing the flow of cost and how costs flow from one account to the other. In addition, we're going to be calculating uh, applied overhead under both normal costing and actual costing. So let's jump right in to the flow of cost and how costs are going to flow from one account to the other. So recall this from your Principles 2 class or your managerial accounting class. So the first three accounts you see here on top are raw materials, work in process, and finished goods. These are your three inventory accounts if you're a manufacturing company. So since these are inventory accounts, they're going to start with a beginning balance on the debit side since these are assets they carry a normal debit balance and we would have an ending balance also on the debit side of the accounts so we're just kind of labeling everything here in the beginning that we know already so let's begin with raw materials well our materials account is going to increase if we make a purchase of materials and that will increase with a debit so we'll put that on the debit side and then once we we requisition materials into process we call these used materials and if they're direct materials like for example we talked about in a previous video about the production of a wooden chair so for example the wood would be considered a direct material and would go directly into process. If it is an indirect material, such as glue or screws, then that would be an indirect material and is not traced right back to the product, it's allocated to the product. So that's going to move down into overhead as an indirect material. Now let's focus on wages for just a second. Now I have this account called manufacturing wages and you may see it called manufacturing wages but some textbooks just simply use uh, wages payable instead of using a manufacturing wages account and either one is acceptable. Uh, the process is a little more complicated if you use manufacturing wages so we're going to focus on using wages payable in this instance in this demonstration as most textbooks do use wages payable including the Pearson textbook so when we incur wages that would be um, a credit to wages payable and instead of debiting wages expense which we learned to do in our financial or principles one class this is a manufacturing process so these costs are not expensed until the product is sold so that includes our wages so if these are direct labor then of course they go directly into process directly into work in process if it's indirect labor for example the custodian in the factory that is um, sweeping the floor of the factory that would be indirect labor so they're not directly responsible for creating our wooden chair for example but they are they are um, integral into us being able to create that chair so they're not direct labor but they are indirect labor because they are in the factory if it were labor in the administration building for example that would not be indirect labor that would be a a selling and administrative expense that would be expensed when incurred like we learned in financial accounting class. Now let's focus on overhead for just a second. So we have indirect materials part of overhead, indirect labor part of overhead, and we also might have something called other overhead. This would be stuff like rent on the factory depreciation on the equipment in the factory things like that would be other overhead all right so let's categorize the debit and credit side of overhead just briefly here the left side of our overhead t account is called actual overhead so these are actually the costs that we have incurred 
as far as overhead goes, our indirect materials, indirect labor, and other overhead. And the right-hand side of overhead is what we're going to apply. So our applied, or you also may see this called allocated. Okay, so applied or allocated overhead. And we're going to calculate this number, and we're going to use an example to do this here in just a little bit. But this number is going to be calculated. So we'll figure that out here in just a little bit. So when we calculate this applied or allocated overhead, this is the number that's going to move into work in process as our overhead piece of our product cost within our work in process T account. So we're going to leave overhead for just a second and finish up work in process. So we've got our beginning inventory there. We've got our three product cost, direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. And whatever we complete this period is called cost of goods manufactured. And that is going to move into finished goods. So whatever we have completed cannot stay in work in process because it's completed. And that's again called cost of goods manufactured. And that moves into your finished goods T account. And it sits there until the product is sold. So we have wooden chairs, for example. Once we sell a wooden chair, we're going to expense it. Now remember, these are inventory accounts. So only the cost of inventory appears here. This has nothing to do with revenues, what we actually sold the chair for. This is just representing our cost. So we're gonna sell the chair and record the cost in our finished goods and our cost of goods sold T account will also go up by that cost of goods sold amount. Lastly, let's move back over to our overhead T account. So we have actual overhead and we have some number that we've calculated, our applied and allocated overhead. So we're probably going to end up with some type of balance. We're either going to have a debit balance or a credit balance. If we end up with a debit balance, that means that our actual overhead was higher than the amount that we calculated or applied to our jobs. So in other words, we did not apply enough cost which also can mean that we that our cost of goods sold is too low. And we need to get rid of this number. So the way we would get rid of a debit balance is to credit the overhead account, because I want a zero balance there. If I credit something, I have to debit something, and we're going to just move that over to cost of goods sold, thereby increasing my cost of goods sold, because as we said, we're underapplied. We didn't apply enough cost. Now, the opposite can happen as well. So instead of having a debit balance, we could end up with a credit balance. So in this case, the number that we calculated, the applied or allocated overhead, is too high. It's higher than actual overhead. So therefore, our costs are too high. So when we fix this, we need our costs to go down. So the way we would get rid of a credit balance is to debit our overhead T account if we debit something, we have to credit something. So we would credit our cost of goods sold by this amount, by the overapplied amount, and therefore our cost would go down. So just remember, we always want a zero balance in overhead at the end. So we have to close any balance that we have in overhead to our cost of goods sold T account. Now, later on in this chapter, we're going to learn how to allocate that overhead balance to multiple T accounts in the process. But for now, just note that any balance we're going to move to the cost of goods sold T account. All right, let's move to an example. Here we have Ruth Products. They use a job costing system with two direct cost categories, direct materials and direct labor, and one manufacturing overhead cost pool. Ruth allocates manufacturing overhead costs using direct labor cost. So our allocation base in this case is direct labor cost. We have to keep that in mind. That's important for us to know. Ruth provides the following information. So we have our budgeted information for 2009 and our actual information for 2009. So that's going to be very important as well. We need to compute the actual and budgeted overhead rates for 2009. So the way we calculate an overhead rate no matter which way we're using it, actual or budgeted, is we're going to take our overhead and divide it by the allocation base. So that's how we're going to calculate our rate. Let's start with actual, calculating the actual rate. 
So again, we said we needed the overhead cost. So since we're doing the actual rate, we need actual overhead. So our actual overhead cost were $2,755,000. And we're gonna divide that by the actual allocation base. Again, we're looking for the actual rate. So we're gonna divide by the actual allocation base. And in the story, it tells us our allocation base is direct labor cost. So actual direct labor cost were $1,450,000. So since we're dividing dollars by dollars, we're gonna end up with a percentage. If, for example, our allocation base were machine hours, it would be a dollar per machine hour. But in this case, it's dollars about a dollar, so we're going to have a percent. So when you do this on your calculator, you find the rate is 1.9 or 190 percent. Now let's switch over to the budgeted rate. So again, we're at the same things, overhead divided by allocation base. In this case, it's the estimated or budgeted overhead. And our budgeted or estimated overhead is $2,700,000. And we're going to divide that by the estimated allocation base this time, or budgeted allocation base. And again, the allocation base is direct labor cost. And the budgeted or estimated amount is $1.5 so again, it's dollars divided by dollars, so it's still going to be a percentage. And this time you find that to be 1.8, or you could represent that as 180%. All right, part two of the question says that during March, the job cost record for job 626 contained the following information. So we had direct materials used of $40,000, direct labor cost of $30,000, and we need to compute the job, the cost of job 626. And the first way we're going to do that is using actual costing. So again, keep in mind when we're looking at the cost of a job, that's direct materials plus direct labor plus overhead. Those are our product costs. They make up the cost of our product, or in this case, the cost of a job. So we need to know direct materials, we need to know direct labor, and we need to know overhead. Well, they give us the first two. They give us our direct cost. We have $40,000 in direct materials, and we have $30,000 in direct labor. So we still need to find overhead. Well, keep in mind, on the prior screen, we found our actual allocation rate to be 190%, or 1.9. So if we multiply that times the allocation base, which they told us in the problem was direct labor cost, so in this case, it's $30,000. We find our overhead applied to this job of $57,000. So the actual cost is $127,000 because we're going to add up all these product costs to find that. Now, this is the actual cost of the job. Well, let's see what the cost of the job would be under what we call normal costing. So this is using estimated numbers to apply overhead. So again, we still need our direct materials, our direct labor, and our overhead. So direct materials hasn't changed. It's still 40000 Direct labor is still 30000 We know this because these are direct costs. They're traceable right back to the job. So we know those numbers for sure. But now we need to find overhead, and we're going to apply this based on estimates. That's what normal costing tells us. And if you look back at the prior screen, we found that our normal costing rate or our estimated rate, was 180%, or 1.8 of direct labor cost. So keep in mind, this is where this number's coming from. So direct labor, we're using direct labor cost times our rate, and we find our estimated overhead applied to the job is $54,000. So the budgeted or estimated cost of the job is $124,000. So again, very close to what actually happened. But then we kind of ask ourselves, well, why are we using why are we using budgeted information anyway? Well, that's really the only time we would really know actual numbers is once at the end of the year when all of our jobs are completed. That's when we would we would actually know actual overhead for the year. So we can't really wait until that time to be able to apply costs to individual jobs. So that's why we use normal costing.
Now, part three of the question says at the end of 2009, we want to compute the under or over allocated overhead under normal costing. And then we'll answer why is there no under or over allocated overhead under actual costing. You probably already know the answer to that, but we'll discuss it here in just a second. So the first thing we need to do to answer this question is to have our overhead T account. Okay, so remember on the left side of our overhead T account is actual overhead and on the right is applied or allocated overhead. Now I put the information here on the screen for us so that we don't have to remember it from the prior, prior screen. Our actual overhead was given at $2,755,000. Now we need to figure up our applied overhead. So recall that our normal costing rate was 180% or 1.8 of direct labor cost. Well, direct labor cost, actual direct labor cost, were $1,450,000. So we're taking the estimated rate, which was 1.8 or 180%, and multiplying it times what actually happened with our allocation base. That is going to give us our applied overhead. In this case, it's $2,610,000. So that's going to move into the applied section of our overhead T account. And now we can calculate the difference. And just looking at these two numbers, we can see that we're going to end up with a debit balance because our actual overhead is higher than what we applied by $145,000. So therefore, we are under applied. We did not apply enough cost to the job. So therefore, when we fix this, it needs to increase our cost of goods sold. So let's see if it does. So here's our cost of goods sold T account. Think, how do we get rid of a debit balance? Well, we would have to credit the T account for $145,000. Now we would have a zero balance in overhead. If we credit something, we have to debit something. And in this case, that something is cost of goods sold. So we simply move this amount to our cost of goods sold T account, thereby increasing our cost of goods sold, just as we thought would happen. So we're happy with that conclusion. So keep in mind when we're underapplied, we're going to end up increasing cost of goods sold, which will decrease our net income. If we're overapplied, that will eventually decrease our cost of goods sold when we fix the problem, thereby increasing our net income. 